So welcome everybody to the Monday, February 5th meeting, joint meeting. Uh, well, right now it's just a meeting of the Conway Select Board at 6.30. It will become the joint meeting of the Select Board and the Finance Committee. I call the meeting to order. This meeting is being taped on FCAT um, for your viewing pleasure at home. And uh, if for some reason the video recording or the owl recording fails, we will still be continuing the meeting live and in person. There are no minutes. Well, there are no minutes. Not next week. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. And um, no warrants. Meetings attended by select boards. Chris? Uh, none. I had to think about that for a minute. You just had one? Oh, geez, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I've been here since 4 30. Uh, capital <laughs> improvement meeting today. Oh, do, do tell. Do tell. Uh, well. <laughs> A lot of it was discussing the definition of capital purchases, the thresholds, um, and uh, obviously going over the request for each department. So there will be a lot of discussions on the definitions and thresholds. Did, did we vote on that in, at town meeting like six, seven years ago? I can look it up. I, I don't know. I believe we did. The threshold, I believe you did. Yeah. I, there's still some questions about definitions. Yeah, I know the um, the Frontier Capital Committee um, um, fleshed all that out like the, at about the same time. That's what prompted the town to do the same thing at the same time. And the Frontier thing was really deep into the definitions. Thorough. I'll have to look yeah, that up. Yeah. I have a guide from the state, um, actually from uh, Massachusetts IRS. All right. All right. So. The, the, <laughs> yeah. in, at the Frontier thing, the person that was really behind the whole thing was um, a uh, Sunderland Select Board member named Scott Bergeron. He's got the electric company. He's got he's an electrician. He drives all around. He works a lot in Conway. Mm -hmm. but Scott he, Bergeron. Yeah, he would welcome any kind of uh, questions. Okay. He's all about the capital definitions. Scott Bergeron. Let me just murder his spelling of his name. B-E-R-G-E-R-O-N. Got it. Um. Um, none for me. I was supposed to be at the um, IT. Oh, oh, disaster planning meeting. I had a conflict, but um, yeah, not for me this week. But I will be at the subsequent ones as, as much as I can. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a lengthy uh, 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 meeting with, our, with the town attorney on Friday. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And oh, I did too, actually. That, I didn't know. I didn't know if that counted. Yeah, that counted. Okay. All right. So yes, I did. I also had a lengthy conversation with our town attorney on Friday. All right. Good. <laughs> um, and uh, and had uh, a meeting this afternoon with the town treasurer and the town accountant regarding the Vestal of the Hills, which we'll talk about in a little bit mm -hmm. as well. Um, Now that Pixie Holbrook is here joining Sue, um, we can skip to the second item on new business, if that's okay with everybody. Um, and that item is entitled, A Discussion and a Possible Vote to Make the Festival of the Hills and its Governing Organization a Town of Conway Government Committee structured as the Festival of the Hills Scholarship Committee pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 60, Section 3C. Um, and, I, you know, before we get it, I'll just, you know, I wanted this so that the rest of the select board can know this is what I've been up to a little bit on this. Um, and, you know, that because you should know about it. Um, and I'll just start with a 
history lessons, many of you know, um, history lesson sounds rather pedantic, sorry, um, but, um, but. Brief context. Brief context, thank you. Um, but the, the uh, Festival of the Hills dates from 1915, from, with, with like 50 years off in between, but um, uh, when, in 2017, it was decided by the then select board chair and, um, you know, and, and there were reasons for that, um, that, that it should no longer be a town committee. That up until that time, it had been a town committee the whole time. <clears throat> but um, the, they, used to, they used to have circuit, they called them circuit riders from DL, Division of Local Assistance, Department of Local Assistance, I don't know which one it is. But um, they had just a gentleman that was assigned to Conway that would come in once every few months and just spend the day at town hall see how operations were running and offer suggestions. And occasionally we'd come to a select board meeting. Um, and then I forget which budget, cut, which governor cut that from the budget. But, um, um, and, and he flagged the Festival of the Hills at that time because, um, as a town committee, because they were, they had outside, all their accounts were outside of town government. So although it was a town committee, they were, writing checks on their own and it wasn't being it, it the it has to be if you're a town committee then it's the town that does all that and so it's but at the same time the way it was handled was regrettable and it left hurt feelings justifiably so um and it's one of those things that i've always had in the back of my mind is to try to make better that um because there are there are significant benefits to being part of the town up to being a town committee. Number one, um, by by the terms of this statute, they can put notices that go out in all of our tax bills. So the notices to get for volunteers, the notices that this is taking, those are, that's significant free advertising of the kind that the committee needs because every year, due to the number of volunteers that are required, it's a struggle, it, it will always be a struggle to get that number, but Anything that we can do to help them do that is would, would help guarantee that this thing keeps on going for another hundred years or more. Um, and the the other thing, uh, our the the d d chief, the, the new chief of police. I don't know how, how many more years we can call him new, but um, the new chief of police, uh, you know, s said, "Well, they're structured as a nonprofit; they should be charged for police services." You're not a town committee, and um, and the same is possibly true with the ambulance, etc. So those that's thousands of dollars. The insurance, their insurance, the first year that they went their own 401c3 way, I believe the insurance was under four hundred dollars. I believe now it's something like eight hundred dollars or more. So all of these costs, they would be covered by the town insurance policy. The town, once they're a town committee, the town police department doesn't bill the town for policing, um, uh, et cetera. So they would save significant monies. The purpose has always been to raise money for scholarships. So to the extent that the monies that they raise can go for scholarships instead of uh, overhead as it is, then that's a good thing. And so that's really, as, as the cost to put this on increase, as the difficulty with volunteer, getting volunteers increases, um, you know, it, it's, this just makes more and more sense to me. So um, I raised it with the town attorney, been talking with her for a couple of weeks, got it to the point where um, was ready to sit down with Jan Warner and Mike, the accountant, and everybody's on board. So that it would, should they, as a committee, decide to do this, there would basically be two revolving accounts. One would be for operations, one would be for scholarships. And um, they'd have to start with seed money for the operations. You know, they, they, would, they would have to look through their previous, past, most recent history, determine of, you know, how much, what the split was between the two and seed the accounts with the monies that they have. But um, in order to do this, it would require 
in order to make them a town committee, it would require a one-time only town meeting vote, which um, would be this year. Um, and um, and it, in order to get them started with seed money, it may, re may require a one-time only, one time. And, and it's also envisioned because of the nature of this thing that periodically town meeting might have to give them some money as well. But um, the idea is to make this self-sustaining. They've been, they've been self-sustaining for six years on their own. So the idea would be, you know, as necessary, the town has got their back. And, you know, that's the whole idea of the return to Mother Conway. Um, um, but, you know, that's... So that was that sort of explains my thinking and the history behind this. Um, the the thing that the accountant really stressed is that like this is like an all or nothing thing. When you're when you're a town committee, you're like part of the town. So although they would have control over their own accounts, the bills would get submitted to the town treasurer for payment by the town out of their accounts, and. Um, you know, the proceeds would get, uh, scholarship proceeds would get submitted to the town treasurer for that account. And um, and then when they decide how it gets dispersed, then the town treasurer would write those checks. So that's that's what I mean by saying you're all in or you're not. And they would also be subject to public meeting law. And they so would be subject to public to meeting law. question. And yes. So it can't be just communication over phone or text or email. Right, right, but um, the the statute provides that there would be there are four members of the public that are the scholarship committee, mm -hmm. um, and you know my thinking was it would be the four volunteer members of the current Festival of the Hills group, and we're looking at two of them, um, and then you know you tell us who you put the select board appoints them, um, and you. You report directly to the select board. Um, the committee would, and there's there's one other member of the scholarship committee under the statute, and that is the superintendent of schools. And I ran this by Darius, and he said, "Yeah, you know, I'll do. You know, that's done a lot of good for your town. Uh, I'll do that, but I'm also okay with assigning my position to anybody that you think is appropriate, Phil. So, um, so that's you know, but." Um, you know, but basically, our ducks are now lined up from a town perspective. All that it would take is a town meeting vote. And I'm pretty sure that that vote would be warmly received. So um, that's why, that explains my thinking. And so that's, that's where we're at now. All, all parts of town government from the town attorney to the town accountant have blessed this. And um, I'm, I'm kind of psyched about it, I think. Just, just because I was—that was my first year in the select board when that happened, and I was opposed to it happening, but um, and I didn't like the way it happened. And um, you know, I, it's important that when you have volunteers, that like you make them feel good and wanted, and that you know all that because they are, and you do, um, and so. So this was sort of my way of trying to make amends for six years ago. Uh, I'm assuming this is what the organization, the route you want to take as well? Well, we are, we're, we have a meeting tomorrow to really discuss it with the rest of the, the organization. But I, I think that from what you're laying out, I, I don't see how it wouldn't be decided. Um, want me to move in that direction. I guess the only questions we would have would be scholarships. We, we currently have the ability to um, give out funds to students that are not necessarily going to a higher education. Right. So is that something that we would be able to do? Or are we able to set up a means of doing uh, private donations into a fund? I think we talked about that at one point. Yeah, that no, we you're, you, you would be able to do that. We would, OK. Yeah, I mean, that's that fits within the general mission. And um, it's not it's not required that they go to public schools in the statute. OK, because so. that's been a long uh, for the festival scholarships, it's been a long-standing thing where it's been a, um, I can't remember what they called it, but I know that, you know, it wasn't necessarily given just to students going to college. And I think in this day and age, we do have a lot of students that are choosing to, you know, not go the college route. So 
Um, or, or take a gap year or two or three exactly. and all that. And so. I think the phrasing of the warrant article would be to graduate, like just you do it to graduating seniors. Graduation plans. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's graduating seniors for regardless of what your plans are. Okay, we can do that. I think, I think as we discussed yeah, we, it once before, I think that was our big hurdle was that we wouldn't yeah. be able to do it. Uh, you know that way so that's that's good mm -hmm. right? yeah. mm -hmm. but we are just representing so I think if we can um, do you need an absolute decision tonight or no no I mean this was this was this, this, was, this yeah town meeting is the absolute decision but um, like I said I don't I see that as like a formality um, mm -hmm. especially if we're not asking for like huge sums of money but it's a part of what we need from you is sort of to know we, we have to make sure that you're seated and ready to go and that it's you we do have funds. Do you know so how much is there currently? Because we'll be distributing. We'll be distributing some. We're, um, we're about 27000 that we have. So I think we can, we have enough to see it in operating, you know, and, and plus still be able to give out our scholarships, with, which is uh, May, June, that they're actually distributed. Yeah, so that sounds... Mm -hmm. So I just, I mean, I have a question about procedure, I guess, logistics, because I know that like a lot of what you all do is just just coordinating the festival itself right. so with open meeting law I wouldn't want this to preclude like you know two people on the committee just getting on the phone because you have to arrange like you know porta potty delivery or talk to a vendor or something so how does this so yeah so, so the, the, the key there is that um, how many people on your committee? Well, that's that was something I wanted to clarify, which is that um, we've had in the past four of us. Uh, we've even had five. We're currently, yeah. And so right now we currently have uh, promises from three people. Um, Sue is leaving. She's kind enough to help us with this transition. I'm also leaving, but I'm going to stay until May to give them their first three uh, guidance through the first three meetings. Uh, monthly meetings um, and um, so could we benefit from a fourth person I think so but I'm understanding is that required no, the the statute allow, uh, allows it for the scholarship committee is four plus the superintendents or the superintendent designee mm -hmm. um, so you would need at least four voting members of the committee, uh, unless you know the, the selector could appoint a non-committee member. So there's a scholarship member. committee. It could th help me understand this better too. There's the board that runs all of it, and only it's only at the end that we say how much money do we get to give to scholarship. Right. So the actual workings of the festival, that's the huge test. Right. Um, and that board meets for that you know particularly. Um, can we, we would certainly respect, as a board, we would highly respect the open meeting, but if we are passing something on to Susan, who's going to run the art show, and she needs to talk to her people, that's not open meeting. Yeah, so I would imagine that most of the members of the scholarship committee would be associate members or non-voting members, in which case um, the open meeting law doesn't well, I feel like the scholarship committee should still be open. I, I, I would. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure about that. I think but scholarship committee would have to be. I would think so. Law. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. not a, that's yeah. not my concern because those are formal meetings and we have a certain procedure by which we determine who would get a certain amount of, of money. It's more the running of Saturday and Sunday. That's crazy stuff. That's Call them a hundred groups. groups. Under the I'm sorry? Um, call them working groups under the umbrella of the Festival okay. of the Hills Committee. Mm -hmm. okay. You've got a working group that's working on setting up, you know, whatever vendors for the parade, yeah. vendors for, you know. That yeah. is the solution. Okay. 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 That's that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. So working group versus scholarship committee versus the board. Yeah. That okay. makes sense. That helps. And I know that when we were part of the town, we did have to post our meetings. So, and I know it, the people got sworn in, so I know that there was some of that that was done. So I don't think it's completely foreign to us. But. Yeah, I mean, if anything, it's got, yeah, I think the open meeting law might have gotten a little easier to comply with just since the required training is now, that online training that they started 10 years ago or whatever is now impossible to fail. 
<laughs> that when you answer, when you, you can still violate open meetings. Yes, yes, but, <laughs> but, when, but but for a lot of people, that was just so onerous because I people were failing that. Right. And um, but now, if you type in the wrong answer, it doesn't let you go to the next question until you try again and <laughs> eventually yes, type in the correct answer. Um, <laughs> so multiple choice. It is. It is. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, and. There, there's actually something on YouTube about how you can game the whole thing and just skip right to the end. Okay. <laughs> right. okay. Um, Quick question about this. So is, is the Festival of the Hills committee going to be the same as the scholarship committee? I was thinking the same thing. I don't know that they necessarily have to. I don't, I don't think they do. And if, in that case, I would recommend, because the scholarship committee, it sounds like it's set up with five, which is good for voting because then you've got a tiebreaker. I would recommend the same thing for the festival committee, however many people you know, you want to be on it. If it's three, at least you got a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. If it's five, you got a tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're going to want to vote on certain things. You know, when your working group comes back and they report to you or whatever, you're probably going to vote on how you want it to go. And, and, and let me understand the when you say open law for uh, open meeting for the scholarship committee, we are handling some confidential information on yeah. application. So how is that? You you don't you the names are um, privileged and confidential. Okay. The amounts are not. Okay. So redact the names. Redact the names. <laughs> and don't have any conversations outside of a public meeting that would constitute a quorum. So if there's five on the committee, mm -hmm. three of you can't get together and like have a conversation. Yeah. Okay. We've never but, operated like that. But no. two can, and you can go back and forth and have like the chair or whatever go back and forth with you know one can go to the chair, the chair can then have a conversation with another, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We've been pretty dutiful, just yeah. out of our own courtesy for each other. Yes, yeah. that's not been difficult at yeah. all. To keep us all together. And as a five hundred one c theory, we we have minutes. We do meeting minutes and things so that we're we have a record. So, so. so it shouldn't be that much of a change in what you're doing. Probably not. Um, <laughs> if anything, you know, I mean, less. and and you know, Jan knows that Jan Warner, their town treasurer, she knows that she's going to be a little bit more bookkeeping for her, but. Um, she, because she, there's two accounting, that's that's also different. Right? There, there would be two funds, right. but um, it, it's going to be pretty clear which one is. I mean, it's going to most of the time you're going to be p p paying bills out of operating bills would be paid out of operations, scholarships would be paid out of scholarships. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess the only difference is that we typically wait till we <laughs> we get the number of applicants to decide how much we're going to give out. So that would be a little bit different. You still so can. Probably. I mean, you still the idea is to have enough seed money, and you can transfer well, money from yeah. back back and forth. So okay. the the idea would be to have enough seed money in there so that you still have flexibility mm -hmm. um, based on what the expense because you can never tell exactly what your expenses or revenue are every year. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And if we had a, God forbid, a bad weather, weather. year, it's all weather. It's a, yeah. you know, could be nothing. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why we try to keep a certain amount reserved. Yeah, I mean, it's which. And then the only other question is, we can still we can still accept donations directly in for the the all funds year, all so, year round. Okay. Perfect. All year round, and that's again, that's what the, the mailers that the town sends out anyway. That you can stick your slip of paper in. Um, the, the your enabling law specifically allows that. So, okay. and the town accountant even said, "Yeah, that's a good idea." And the law, he looked it up. Yeah, the law does allow that. So, he's, everybody's. Can I ask a question? Please do. Okay. Um, as regarding the timing on this, since we're, if let's say we vote on it for fiscal year twenty five, yeah, and we go into fiscal year twenty five on July, July one. We would need a budget for the committee, presumably, correct? For the FY25. Um, I was going to ask that as well. It, Mike said whether it was going to be two revolving accounts or one general fund. It's two, like, It has to be two revolving accounts. Okay. The, the scholarship is separate. It needs to be separate accounting wise from the. Right, but they won't have a budget like, say, Open Space or ConCom? That's what I was wondering, if we need to put it in the omnibus here that we're working on right now. I mean, it, from what they say, they may not be requesting any funds. We'll see, but... Um, well, wouldn't that be the operating budget? That would be the operating budget, yeah. and but they pay scholarships out of what's the operating budget. That, that's the whole idea. I'll, I'll, I'll check with Mike and see what, yeah, how, how he wants to set that up. 
Because if it has to be a revolving fund, I mean, that'll be set up at town meeting. Right. Right. But if it's, if we need to know for now to put money in there for FY25, we're going to need to know pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's, they already have the money. It's just putting it under the auspices of the town instead of them, their own private accounts. So that's, I don't. Well, I'm just another question that I would have is like, and you're, you're set up as a not for profit 501c3 right now? Yeah. So we, uh, can the town just accept whatever balance of funds that they have in that not for profit to help fund the committee? Which is what I think you're thinking yes. of. Yes. But I'm just wondering how that, because you don't know what your ending balance is going to be. You're going to have closing costs for the organization, you know, shutting it down, that kind of thing. So, so yeah. Yeah, just to give you an idea. Um, so, we'll just, we basically, in May, is where we do the scholarship um, determination of who's going to get it. We get the applications in based on the number of applicants. Uh, we kind of do a grading system and then we decide on a lump sum that we can do and we divide it up based on this number of points we give people. Yeah. It has to do with financial need, it has to do with, you know, merit, you know, academics, if they actually volunteer. Yep, if they actually volunteered at the festival, we give them points for that. Um, and that's, and that money goes out. Now, in the same time, we're starting to get money in for the coming up festival where we're selling to uh, spots for vendors, mm -hmm. so crafters and food vendors, and then we start to sell advertising for the program booklet. So those are our main funds that come in. Um, the day of the festival, we do have our booths, we have the fried dough, we've got the, you know, the bake sale, the Cafe Conway, those things. Those are also fundraisers, but, um, you know, a lot of that money is starting to come in as of, I would say, June. Mm -hmm. The other thing to keep in mind for this year is we just put money into a CD that doesn't mature till August. So we've got um, about 10,000, I think, yeah, 10,000 in that CD. So that would be the only thing if this goes into, you know, okay, you might be tied up with that. Yeah, so it sounds to me like in many respects this is almost a normal operating season for you guys mm -hmm. and so we should have a placeholder in the budget for the committee but maybe that there's no dollars allocated to that and then when you get to the end of this cycle um even though the committee will exist and be subject to public, you know, public open meeting laws and that that's at, uh, as of july 1st you could finish up with the nonprofit still mm -hmm. right and get through the cycle and then you, we can figure out the disposition of any remaining funds in the not-for-profit and figure out how to transfer them over into maybe a scholarship fund for the town, put all that money in, and then we budget for the 2026 year an operating budget for the committee. And I guess the only question would be when we get to the festival, which is what, August, October 2nd, I think it is? First weekend. Would the, are the big pieces of it are the, the cost for the police, and the cost for the insurance. So is that mm -hmm. something that we have, if we're gonna not be quite there with the town yet, we're still gonna have those fees, probably? No, no. no. Town, yeah, town once town meeting votes, you're there. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So this is just a transition we'll thing. Mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll let us know after your meeting tomorrow, and then we could set up a meeting with Mike Cello, the town accountant, and just kind of hash out some of this timeline stuff and how okay. how that should work. With with the committee's treasurer as well, Frank. 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 Yeah. Yeah, yeah Frank. Yeah. And, and, and me, really. Yeah. And yeah. Frank and I kind of was transitioning to Frank. So. Because <laughs> just so that he can learn the procedures to deal with Jan, just you know whatever, and just get mm -hmm. it all. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay. and by the way, you've been having a conversation with John Crane. He's from the Finance Committee. So, <laughs> I Sue, 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 <laughs> Sue, <laughs> Sue and Pixie, yeah. John. Hi. Okay. Um, right. But that's. Okay, well, I think this is great. I think I've, you know, I think the festival, as we've talked about before, is really does a lot for the town. Um, I, I, we've met so many people that are new to town that said that they were so impressed with the festival is one of the reasons why they chose to move here. So we're really an ambassador. So Absolutely. I, I'm glad to see that you're recognizing that and welcoming, welcoming us back. So we'll. And I'm struck by how many people I've talked to who said you're not part of the town. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So there's that. Well, in the sense, you know, I get mail for you guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll see Dave. Great. Great to see. All right. Because well, people you. assume it's. Oh yes. Yep. Yeah.
They go, yeah, so. so what? Now, they'll, now they won't get it. It'll go back to assume that we're still private. But. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Phil, for your advocacy. Yes. I really appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. All your time, so. All right, so we'll keep in touch here. Yeah, good. Yeah, let us know after you're Sure. Because then once, once you let us know that that would be a request to the select board and then we would exactly. vote and then we would get it on the warrant, et cetera. But that's, yep. it's your, we're waiting to hear from you before we have yep. to do that. Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye. It's easy. It's like this very contentious debate over table. Whether they belong in the town. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. Special. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably get yeah. the expense. Yeah. 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 Your table. I do have a whole basement full of stuff. That's right. That's right. We come with baggage. Don't we all? Yeah, you know, we don't. That's right. Clean glasses. Oh, well, yeah. You're right. <laughs> <Boy. laughs> Can you can uh, call the meeting to order at this point. All right. Really quickly. All right. Really quickly. Um, because we actually voted on this last. We did. We just didn't have it to sign. All right. We now have the letter. Um, just really quickly, the new business, the disaster relief letter. Um, Thanking our legislators. Mm -hmm. And the Mass DOT for all the work. Yeah, and it's good to leave out the six months of sleepless nights and stress over whether or not we were going to get this money. No need to mention that. It's <laughs> <laughs> I vote that we sign, I move, I move that we sign um, this letter that we've all reviewed to our legislators and the Mass DOT. Second. In appreciation. All in favor? There. Aye. 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 Good. I make a motion to approve the uh, finance committee meeting in order to meet with the select board. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Thank you. Great. And I make a motion that to approve the notes of our uh, finance committee meeting from last Monday, the 29th. Okay. All in uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No abstentions. That's it. Was it Roy vote? I didn't hear. Roy, are you going to vote on the minutes, approving the meeting minutes? Busy. Right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> he still got COVID. No, he just wants to stay home and enjoy the fire. Oh, oh gee. If that's good with you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, the first one up is the select board budget. All right. <laughs> so, is there, is there can you give us a number on that? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, sorry. I have, paper I have to. No, no just what's up there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't write on that. Uh, one, two, two. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah, how come we get stuck with mosquito testing on our budget? No, all hazards mitigation. No, no, no. That's money that's in there that was voted before. Oh, okay. And, and see, it was here on um, Article 19 on June 4th of 22. That money was in there because we were going, we were talking about doing it. Just to update you, last year they didn't have an application for us right. to fill out, and I haven't seen anything this year. So I don't know what's going on with that. But. If you ever need to do some mosquito testing, you've got five thousand dollars to. That's part of free cash, is that it? Uh, no, these are separate accounts that were um, awarded during a or voted during town meeting. Oh, all right. I just put it in there so you know you know what. Yeah. Play with. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I still get periodic requests from Carolyn uh, Deerfield, who is the chair, the longtime chair of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control Commission. <laughs> really want but uh, this is one thing that in previous discussions, boy, do people get animated about this and nobody wants aerial spraying and nobody wants, it doesn't matter, but nobody wants the trucks going by with the spraying. Well, it's there and we haven't touched it. Yep. So we don't have to, <laughs> we're not yep. about it now. 
What's the total? Just total. I would take just all level. I just just so I understand, this was voted in a prior fiscal year. The I'm sorry, test, I didn't hear you. The mosquito testing was voted in a prior fiscal year at town meeting. This past fiscal year. No, no, no. It was Article 19 um, from June 4th, 22. Oh, and it doesn't revert back to free cash. No, no, because this is a separate fund. That's why I put it in there separately. Okay. So can, yeah. All right. So it's just cash sitting there for that. It's been allocated for that purpose. Okay. All right. So I, I copied it over. Is that, are you guys going to level fund? Yes. Okay. Um, just so you're aware, I did find out, I didn't know this, I did find out that the um, refreshments that were served at the All Boards Towns Committee meeting can be paid for out of the select board budget. So we should have a refreshments budget. Then. Well, you could do it out of trainings and meetings, sort of, if you wanted, yeah. but, you know, I think that's probably where he's taking it out of. And that that one would only be once a year, but I just wanted to let you know that, that that's a legitimate expense, so. Yeah, that makes sense. I think this looks fine. Mm -hmm. we can always, I mean, it's not gonna make a difference if we have to cut that 500 down to like 100. <laughs> yeah, but at least except there goes our refreshment budget. Well, there's, <laughs> but at least it's something we can cut, <laughs> BYOB. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Any further comments from the finance committee? None. Roy, are you anything about any opinion? Should we have refreshments in the budget? <laughs> 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 Can't get a response out of it. Way too flip. <laughs> yeah. He's having refreshments. <laughs> <laughs> He's having dinner. He's, he's very, very stupid. <laughs> Okay, so the next one is uh, town administration budget. Um, I didn't change anything in the salary and wages for my line because there's a contract negotiation coming up. Um, the assistant to the boards, I'm not sure we're going to need that because the committees, this was for planning, zoning, and CONCOM. We haven't been able to find anybody for this position and they don't have a need right now. So. I can keep that in there as a placeholder if you like, but, um, and this will come as... We're just we're, keep that in mind if when this, you know, depending on how the budget looks. Okay, right. Keep a, keep a total of placeholders out there and things that, okay. if we have to. All the things that we think we can cut. So, and this will come as a surprise to Adam because he didn't know I was putting this in here, but I would like to request a personnel and, Finance and select board to consider a raise. Perhaps to 22 an hour. Ears, ears, <laughs> ears on the personnel committee are perking up. <laughs> we also have a quorum. Actually, have a quorum, right? Uh, we members. don't. We oh, we don't have a quorum, do we? Uh, no. There's only three of us. There's only two of us. Right, three right. Of. That's okay. I mean, I oh, can bring that to your meeting. We do have quorum. Yeah. We do. Yeah. We but, not, but you didn't notice the meeting. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. I, we didn't notice the meeting. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just putting this out there that this is the request I am making that he didn't know anything about. Okay. Not so, then, so then he would be ineligible for the townwide percentage rates. Yeah. Well, I have to make sure that, that what that is is less exactly. than what, because we don't know what the COLA is yet. Exactly. But since 1938, right? Isn't that what you get paid I'm at? not that old. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So I think going from 1938 to 22 is not going to be a 2 or 3% COLA. Mm. No. So. Hmm? Okay. No. I'll put it right in here. Go. 19. Wow. So 3% 20. 20. 20. Even if it's a 3% COLA, it's not even $20. <laughs> yep. What's the per hour. Per hour. So the only increases apart from proposed wage increase, postage. Yeah, I went up a little bit in postage. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, so it's mileage was level funded, professional technical level funded. I might be able to come down on both of those, to be honest with you. Postage I went up because I'm hoping to get done this year the um, guide to Conway. Sorry? I said the postage went up. Well, postage went up, but I haven't spent a whole huge amount, if you can see, you know, the previous lines. So 
I was trying to hedge my bets with that. But the guide to Conway that I'm interested in doing, uh, you know. Um, anyway, so that that might. Oh, to send their dump stickers out and spend three dollars. Oh, that's wax. true. Well, yeah, but that's not coming out of this one. That would come out of no, transfer out station. Of yeah. Um, these the subscriptions say training and meetings went up only because I didn't make it this year, but MMA can be expensive. I haven't made it yet, actually. Uh, contract services is the same. Advertising is the same. Uh, copier went up just because I think we're probably going to need a little bit more for the... Tom? To, yeah, for they, those kinds of yeah, things. They called us and said yeah, yeah. everything's going up. And they gave us one last, free, not freebie, but reduced price one. They held one for us. Yeah. So nice and To fun. warn us that... Yeah, which was over $500. Uh -huh. So. Like yeah, well, everything's going up. Yeah. Is that on a, is that on a lease or do we just rent that on a month to month basis or? It, no, it's yeah, we have a contract with them. So But that is because so this was one of my favorite arguments at town meeting that went on for like over an hour know, many years ago it was was whether to buy or lease the new office copier and it, the argument was like personal and nasty and went on for over an hour uh, well my i guess my only question is if it's on a lease isn't it is in a fixed price lease so how can they how can they own this copier we must this must be a service contract it's a service, a service contract, contract. Oh, okay you really That's can't different. lease. Music, right. In Massachusetts, they made it pretty much impossible to lease equipment. Oh, for the, for the government? Because yeah. you have to put out the lease out the bit every year. Can you imagine yeah. the lease finance company having a yeah. lease going to Yeah, gotcha. All right. That answers that question. So um, so we'll, we'll probably revisit this one again. So that's where it's sitting now. I may go back and tweak it and bring down some of those numbers. Yeah, that's always a good idea, if possible. Well, I mean, we can always bring this down. Absolutely. And for final review. Yeah. Could you also uh, just, it might be, it might help clarify if we just updated the label to say it's a service contract. Oh, copier to say. Yeah, because it's, yeah. it's unclear whether it's copier supplies or lease payments or service yeah, contracts. Yeah. And you have, you have another line that says contracted services yeah. and that could ostensibly fall under contracted services right. too. Sure. This is this is what I got from the accountant. So I'll just oh, yeah, which is fine. Yeah, um, I just we won't have to ask that question next year. <laughs> so that means Michael has to change his. Uh, his quick no, I'll just leave it in here so you all know, I, okay. because I'm not going to mess with asking him to change his. He's he's got them set, um, and maybe you know maybe I even have the wrong one in there. I have no idea. I don't think it is, but. Okay. Any other questions on Boy, that? have you any questions on the uh, town administration budget? It's mouthful. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any John? No, I have no, more, no further questions. No, it's pretty straightforward. All right. Sorry, I missed the one on the agenda, but this is the legal budget. Um, I'm just requesting exactly the same. We pretty much knock on wood been under every year we bumped it up to eleven thousand one year and we're just going back now, so. so this is what every time i call um donna this is the account that it gets charged to uh, yes okay yes correct yeah do you mean that do you mean that without us having to be signed no <laughs> that's great you sure um yeah i am sure Somebody stays around. But that's yeah, okay. I'll get it around to you. But good catch. Um, any no questions? questions? No, I just hope, hope she doesn't retire for a long time because the, the population of uh, commercial contract attorney in uh, Greenfield continues to dwindle. Oh, yeah. yeah. What population? Commercial attorney in Greenfield. All right. Roy, are you ready? Really? IT? We're up to <laughs> IT, <laughs> IT yeah, budget. I'm as ready as I'm. Thank you, Mike. What's this one? IT. IT is what? So oh, IT. You want to skip? Well, you want to skip IT so you can finish? Or you want to skip? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> very. So this includes nothing related to our meeting this morning. You understand that? 
Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. This yes. is basically the same level of services that we currently have. Correct. Wow. What is and it, it, it does, by the way, include for the rest of the finance committee and select board. It does include projected increases from Comcast and uh, and Microsoft mm -hmm. because. Uh, which would be done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's, that's what we came up with. So, um, Roy, Phil was asking about what you meant. So you're talking about the increased costs if everybody had a town email and if we had some town cell phones to increase our security, correct? Well, okay, email, cell phones, uh, in following each item that comes in that people feel insecure about, follow it to its logical end, submitting this stuff to the uh whatever it's called i can't remember and uh and also training training is a significant component here and whether we get it at no you know at no cost from the state which is great um or not uh you know so that that is significant but yes the town accounts you're talking you're talking a minimum the minimum for like uh, you know uh, committee every every committee uh, member having their own account the minimum it starts at like three bucks for what's called a kiosk account but nobody likes that because they can't they can't get it in Outlook or they can't use it in their, their client that they're using so you have to go up to the next tier which is about five bucks per user per month mm -hmm. and um, uh, so that's significant. You know, that's a significant cost. And, um, yeah, and the cell phones become a more significant cost. Why did that come up, by the way? It came up because it certainly has been uh, to my attention, and I've known about it for years, and it's just, you know, in the, somebody in my position, we balance off convenience, security, cost, the whole ball of wax. But in an ideal world, uh, nobody would use their own cell phones for town business. That's just the way because cell phones get hacked. Um, they, there's a million different reasons why it's not a good practice. And um, yeah, and that's, that's the... Because uh, the way you started out your analysis of this was like, if people feel insecure about something, and I didn't, like... That, that was the meeting, yeah. Well, that's a different, that's, that's, you're looking at an email, you say, what the heck is this? I better show it to Roy. So you show it to Roy, and what do I do with it? I got a researcher. Okay, I may find the answer to it in 30 seconds, or it may take me quite a bit. And if we want to, if we want to pursue each of these emails to their logical end, it's a lot of time and effort. Some organizations have the resources to do it. We are a very small town, and I do not suggest that we do it. I think that if we had a way, uh, a button that you guys could press when you get these things and they get submitted to the state, uh, what do they call it, uh, Bernie? The Fusion Center. The Fusion Center, okay. <laughs> and at the Fusion Center, they uh, generate electricity. No, they, um, they look at these emails and they try and find common threads. They see if, they, if there are known threats they see if these threats are unknown threats. Uh, truthfully, you know, with in, in our circumstance here, I don't, it's a good exercise to go through. If it doesn't cost us money, by all means. Um, but is it gonna really help us? I don't think so. If, uh, so. if I could give a little background, maybe the part of my town administrator update that explains what we're talking about would be helpful if that's okay yeah. yeah okay so the executive office of technical security and services is eots um, has given us free services to develop a cyber incident response plan so what that means is this if we get attacked right now i call roy and that's the only plan we have it's not a plan i mean not that it's not you know first on my list but these are plans that all towns need to develop because as they say in the field it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when so i'm trying to get ahead and develop this plan um, for the town and what happened is 
I actually got in a little too late for a community compact grant and I let the state know, oh, that was like top of my list and they found some money they had with the vendor and they're giving us this for free. So I was beyond thrilled to be able to get this going. So um, we created a team which includes our treasurer, Jan Warner, police chief, um, Don Bates, Adam, myself, Roy, and Erica. And we're meeting a couple times a week and we're going through all the information that we need to develop this plan. And one of the things that has come up about this is, you know, to be truly secure, to be able to control the security, everybody who deals with town business should be using a town device and should have a town email. Well, that's prohibitively expensive for a town of our size. Mm -hmm. So that's what Roy was talking about when it depends on what we end up adopting after this. I'm not recommending that we do that either, but it's been brought to my attention several times that that's how you remain really secure. So. Well, very, very neat. Let me let me just elaborate for a minute. <coughs> Pardon me. The, the the more important <coughs> part of this uh, <coughs> team is the incident response plan, and that is uh, I don't want to say simply. It's not simply, but that is a uh, <coughs> basically a procedure based template for responding to <laughs> sorry I'm choking my dinner here <laughs> uh, for responding to incidents where people feel that data has been stolen or we get a ransomware uh, all of a sudden <laughs> you come into your PC in the morning and it's locked you got a sign that says uh, hand over <laughs> 50 bitcoins or whatever so we have to have, and it's a very good practice, to have a prescribed, um, <clears throat> what do I want to say, policy-based, repeatable incident response plan that is, that is documented every step of the way. <laughs> and it uh, helps, helps protect us against lawsuits, should uh, data, I, I mean, it's, it's not just any data, it's data that could be <laughs> harmful yeah. if uh, used or sold to the wrong parties, and then you find yourself with a lawsuit. Um, well, it's also operations, I mean, like if, you know, if, if suddenly well, GM couldn't, you know, issue tax bills. Yeah. Yes, well, well, we've had that without being attacked, but the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, that, um, is, we do have, we, we have, <laughs> I'm sorry, we have backups on top of backups here. And so what, what that implies is a window, a restoration window. We do not have a five minute restoration window. We might have a two day restoration window or a one day restoration window. And I think that <clears throat> we've demonstrated that the town can survive that. And again, this is not up to me. <laughs> up to me. I've actually explained this before. The shorter the restoration window, the higher the cost, and it's uh, kind of uh, exponential. So, yeah. Exactly. So that's the free grant that we got to develop this plan. Right. So it sounds like what Roy is saying. <laughs> there's a difference between like the incident response and then like the prevention steps that we could take. Yes. Yes. So we Thank could you. get everyone yep. town email, we could get everyone a town phone, but that's different from, if, if we don't do that, that's a, that's a whole different scenario from just what we do Correct. if we have a right. emergency and data. Well, so this, this program is literally to map out, and we just went today through all this chart of information that we have to know, well, what do we do in this case? What do you do in this case? And so that's what we're working on, right. developing this plan. Well, this be in front of or behind the preparation for the climate changes? <laughs> um, concurrent. <laughs> concurrent. <laughs> Hopefully, well, we'll let me add, <laughs> I do look forward to the development of this plan because I think uh, I will sleep better at night and I think that uh, the town will be much better off for it. I and the fact that the state is providing us this resource is great. But keep in mind, 
it does take resources to maintain the plant, to uh, to practice the plant, just to just so so you can use it when the time comes. And I notice I didn't say if because it's when the time comes because invariably uh, the time will come. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, that's that, so. The whole point is in those numbers you see on the spreadsheet. That stuff is not in there. That's that's basically uh, the IT as we've had it, up to, uh, you know, as we had it this past year. So this budget doesn't include any contingency plan for if we suddenly lose access to all town systems. Right. Correct, but uh, you know this this process is only supposed to take at the maximum four weeks. So we could revisit this in a month, and if they have, if for some reason, because I was not expecting to be honest with you, any additional costs to come out of this plan. Right. It's just a it's just it's our just prescription plan. for what yeah. we do. If yeah. something happens, but they can have a recommendation that says you got to keep twenty thousand dollars in reserve because this is what we. I, I don't think they're going to do okay, that though. Happen, I I. So. We didn't talk money at all, okay. yeah. so I don't well, think that's... So I have a question. Other towns our size in this area, including especially Franklin County, are uh, having to require the same thing. Isn't there a way that maybe FERCOG or somewhere we can pool our resources and have like a common plan? That well, it, it's, unfortunately, it's town specific. It depends on how your system is, that your system and your no, government set really up. Um, no, no, very at a higher level, it's it's all the same. The problem is the forecast seems to be backing out of services they're going to provide to towns, not providing additional services. Well, a couple it's, of years ago, it, they gave a training uh -huh. for us, uh, and it was all specific. We had like it was a I don't know six or eight different um, mm -hmm. sessions that they had on IT security. Mm -hmm. And they gave us templates for the incident response plan and for what they call the WISP, the written yeah, yeah. information. Like, security plan. Thank you. Um, but then the next step is, well, you have to do it. Right. And right. I needed help right. to right. do right. it. Right. So I got <laughs> this free grant to get it done and to have this, these security experts walk us through all the information. The template itself is actually one that they use Right. They're trying to make it um, uniform statewide. Yeah, standard. Good. Yeah. That's good. So and I have a question then. Is this something which um, we have to comply with by a certain date because otherwise the Department of Revenue will uh, put us in the penalty box? That's no, good... but I'm trying to stay ahead be for liability mm -hmm. reasons because right now we have a million dollar coverage for a cyber security incident and or breach or whatever might happen. Every year, um, Maya, our insurance company, is putting out questionnaires and getting more and more yeah. into the weeds yeah. about what they're going to cover us for. So right. I'm just trying to yeah. stay ahead of that so that we continue to keep our insurance. So yeah. is it for insurance reasons, and also I have a question in terms of the uh, insurance and then our audit. Our auditors, since cybersecurity is now part of our yes. municipal audit. Correct. Is this also for our auditors? If it you will, don't do it, it, will it become a, yeah. a uh, in, in the MDNA session as an as, as an exception? Um, they're, they're, they've put that in their letter to us um, a couple of times, and you know, right. honestly, I just hadn't gotten back to them to let them know that I was mm -hmm. on the job with that. So I'll <laughs> make sure to do that for the next audit. Okay. But it's definitely in our auditors' right. um, letter. Thank you. The the state money that they found, how much was that? I don't know. What they basically did was grant us the vendor in these working sessions. So that how much money it is is up to them. They just said, we'll do this for you for free. And so. the community compact grant that you said you didn't, you missed the debt? Uh, well, the money was all gone. <laughs> it's a roll, open rolling, and it, I didn't realize that it goes like that. So, yeah. So we, I was, we participated in a community compact grant not that uh, long ago. Mm -hmm. But I can't say that it was a while some account. stuff came comes out of it, I don't think anything was put to use for whatever the reason. Um, uh, generally, you know, generally there's there's costs when you're changing process and you're adding process. Um, it it costs. And if you look at this figure here for the IT budget for the for the town, I don't know where it stacks up. 
in the world of municipal budgets, it'd be useful to see what, uh, you know, 44,876 over the, uh, what, 7 point, whatever the budget comes out to, you know, what percentage that is. Actually, pull the schools out, they have their own IT. Um, it still would be interesting to see, interesting to see how it stacks up with other towns. The problem is, you're looking at a town of 50,000 and looking at a town of 1,800, there's a huge world of difference. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. I, I, I don't really. So you look, um, look at Wayne, you don't look at Lowell. Well, not just that, Roy, because I've tried to do that before in gathering information from other towns. The problem is that towns often put the information in different budgets. So, for instance, yeah. We put everything into one budget. We've got Comcast, we've got Verizon, we've got all the sub, you know, mm -hmm. and right. other towns may have that separated out. So it's really right. difficult to compare apples to apples with IT budgets. Right, right, right. But my sense is it's. Um, They're all more than uh, 20 years ago. <laughs> well, my sense is it's not a lot of money, especially when you, you, you know, look at your. Your, your technical expenses there are 12,000 bucks. Your software and subscriptions is $31,000. So, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, so I, you know, anyway, it, it is, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's some, uh, well, let's see what the, let's see what this plan looks like, Bernie. And, you know, we, we certainly should, shouldn't wait till next year. You know, we should look at it this year and see, you know, see if we need to supplement, the, see if we need to purchase some additional tools or whatever to to let us um, uh, sleep better at night, I guess you'd say. Yep. But the, thing, the other thing is, look, we are not, we don't really, aside personnel, in my opinion, is by far the most sensitive area here. Everything else, if there's, and it's not that I'm being lack of it, but everything else, if there's a data breach about, about what? Somebody being late on their taxes? Um, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you've gotten stuff from your own, you know, what these companies do, they say, look, there's a data breach, some of your data was exposed, we're putting you on the uh, credit monitoring for the next two years. And that's very relatively inexpensive to do. And this is, this is what it's come down to, and I'm not saying to treat yeah, to treat information lightly, and especially personal information. But it's, um, it, that's, but it's not inexpensive if there's a data breach and you have to pay for credit monitoring for every taxpayer in the town of Conway. That's That actually well, happened in my employment in the past couple of years. We had a data breach and it was quite expensive because that was what was required. Everyone. We had a, a data breach in Conway. People were fine. It was generally part of the pandemic. Uh, Shannon reported that unemployment claims were being filed on behalf of some of the uh, employees on payroll of the town. Yeah, that was some fraud that we had. I don't think there was a data it breach. Wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, well, but it's data, but, they got a hold of it. I mean, um, it's, that, that affects people. But we have had attempts, really, um, can't be expensive. we've had sophisticated attempts to, um, uh, you know, uh, attacks on the part of the town government that processes payment to get payments to make it look like these were sure. like legit Both bills or legit or, yeah. um, you know uh, amounts due for personnel yeah. um, or send you a bogus bill yeah, yeah right. or, or send uh, send request for an account change for right. like an employee right. that were very sophisticated and looked like completely legit and if right. we didn't have really good people in those positions that did their own independent investigation just to make sure. Right. Um, you know, we, well, that, we, this is, this is great. This is wonderful. But because I, you know, I, it never even came to me. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So right. if you guys were able to deal with it and yeah. keep us uh, out of hot water, it's, that's fabulous. So but again, from a, I'm sorry, go ahead. No. Uh, from a system's point of view, um, you know, I, again, I, it's those, the, the, what you're talking about there, Phil, uh, these are phishing attempts, like you said, bogus, but, you know, sophisticated stuff that um, could happen without computers as well, I suppose. You know, companies submitting bogus bills and, you know, having somebody on the inside paying them or whatever. I mean, this has happened in the past. 
Um, not here, but elsewhere. So um, I, I think that the more skilled staff we have, the better off we are with anything. And I would never say, don't spend money on training. Spend money on training. Spend money so people, when something doesn't look right, they're immediate, they're, you know, they're not going to click on it, okay? They're just going to, they can report it to Veronique, they can report it to me. If they had a button on their, on their desktop, they could hit the button and maybe send it uh, where it needs to go. So, well, this is anyway. the reason why the last two years, and it doesn't cost us anything for the EOTS has also given us free cyber security, which I know are a pain for people to do, but you really do learn stuff. And we're doing it again this year. We'll be starting up pretty soon. So everybody with the town email will again get their assignments, and it's a year-long thing that goes to the end of December. And just to remind everybody who's watching that the number one way data breaches happen is through us, through mm -hmm. our, our own fallibility. So. You know, right, but uh, I also thought that the whole, you know, since w as soon as you, the more digital you turn, you, you make town government, the more payments you process online, the more personnel, uh, you know, salary that you pay biweekly online, the more targeted you have. Like, and, and that aren't we just better off going back to the extent that we can to like paper and sending people paychecks? Um, well, like, you, is, is, isn't that a less expensive alternative than all this <laughs> well, like training and et cetera, et cetera? Right. You're, an old, you're an old, old school. <laughs> well, you just yeah, see if we Tom, can work Tom, out. Tom, Tom would vote yes. He's saying, like, go right back. Go to the go to three by five card and the yellow uh, legal pad. Which is, okay. Our software but, would kill us. Uh, go, go we can get rid of the repo and get one of the um, mimeographs. Uh, <laughs> uh, you just said something there, Phil, that is extremely important. And what you said was all the stuff we do online, okay, meaning a lot of the stuff is handled elsewhere. They're just, you know, you're, you're putting in data and the processing is going on elsewhere. And those entities are the ones who have bear the heavy burden. And whether or not they are up, look, Microsoft execs had their own emails hacked. Can you believe this? Microsoft. Okay. Your top execs, execs had their emails hacked. What does that tell you about the operating system and the company behind the operating system that you sit down to work with? Well, not, not Tom, maybe not you, Phil, but Veronique does, uh, Erica does, lots of people do. Okay. So this is stuff they're working with every day. Sorry about getting animated about this. No, no, no. The bigger the company, the bigger the target. Yes. Okay. IT budget, level funded, basically. More or less. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> important as level funded. No, it was very close to level funded. Yeah. Professional services. We're now this is level yeah. service. This is a different one. All right, we're now town insurance. I know with approval, though, Roy, that your request for professional services was down from last year. So thank you. Well done. Oh, okay. Sorry about my rant, but it's just this is a no-win situation, yeah. uh, and and it, it seems like you know it's just. Um, the skilled people are the best asset, I can tell you this. So, hats off to everybody, really. Well, good. Yeah. Well, that's usually true. <laughs> All right, so if we're moving on to property insurance, I'm afraid I have not gotten the estimates. Yeah. So I just threw in a 6% increase as a placeholder. This is somebody usually gives us estimates in March, right? Yeah, I think so. I think Why don't we just put this off till March then? Well, we, yeah. we will. <laughs> this, one, this will be re-reviewed when it comes in. But there was an increase. There, I mean, we had no increase from that by 23 to 24. Yeah, so it was flat. It was, in 24. It was flat. However, I, got, I, I'm, I may actually have to ask for some money because what happens is they do their workers' comp Oh. audit halfway through and then all of a sudden they send you a bill that you weren't planning on oh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I may be over yeah. so like I said I just well, threw it a 6% to be the payroll so if we start paying people more we have to pay more workers comp yeah yes yes why are police and fire go up so much so I didn't this is insurance for police and fire it was 14,000 and it went down to 11 
So it actually went down. Expended was nine thousand eight hundred and fifty-seven. Yeah, I don't. I, right. So the so the bill. Okay. Yeah. So the bill actually came in more. And actually, that's some, another thing that I'm going to be reviewing. Um, for the fiscal year, so not only hopefully for this fiscal year. So this is another one we'll be coming back to. I'm afraid. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the same thing, just to let you know right now, with the FERCOG, um, I thought they were going to have their assessments to me tonight, and I didn't get them. At least I didn't see them in my email, so we'll put that on for another week. All right, so... Um, emergency management. This one only went up... Oh, sorry, what am I doing? Um, this one only went up a little bit. And the main reason is because um, we use Blackboard Connect for our robo calls that go out to everybody, and that actually went up a little bit. Um, they charge us on a fiscal on a calendar year instead of a fiscal year. Mike wants me to try to change that, but the last bill was for sixteen ten, so I threw an extra forty bucks for the heck of it. And then we basically just put this, got rid of the mileage and put in a little bit more for equipment. So it's only going up for a hundred bucks. Hopefully that'll be all good. The equipment is one thing that this that we did get from MEMA. Um, the provision of radio repeaters um, on the on, on on our emergency management the main spot at the firehouse next to the firehouse and then at the ground the alternative location at the grammar school they did come in and install relatively expensive equipment um, and the equipment and the installation was provided at no cost to the town and last year amanda had applied and she is again but for the um, emergency management program grants and got the town two new laptops for the EMD and the assistant EMD, put the cases and peripherals and everything. So that was really nice to be able to upgrade our equipment for three years. We did, the other thing is we, um, I'd like to, the one thing that the fire department has asked for um, uh, in this that we have not been able to provide is um, from MEMA is sandbags. Um, in the case of flooding to be able to channel water where the fire department wants it to go instead of where it's going um, and after after uh, many requests they did make <coughs> they did make available to us I think they're at, at the firehouse now like 75 small empty sandbags um, mm -hmm. Uh, we, we, have to fill with sand. we have we have to fill with sand, but all of our sand is already pre-mixed with salt, and that's a big no-no. You only um, asked for the bags. No, 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 and you know, it but it turned the dump. No, no, like what they do is they give the filled ones to towns that have more people, um, and then we are sent to those towns to get like their leftovers that they don't want, and so we, so we got. From Greenfield Fire Department, 75, 15 pound empty sandbags. And um, yeah, and so there's really, we don't really have a budget for the manpower to fill those. Um, and if any. How do you fill them? Yeah, it's back breaking work and it takes like a crew of people to do and it's slow going. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, there is like machinery that can do them. But they don't supply those to us, um, and we don't have access to them. But um, so we have empty. I got a barn full of feed bags. If you want. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, I mean, but we do. The, the, we should have several pallets for the fire department of fill. They be stored? <laughs> the they would be stored. They could be stored outdoors under a tarp behind the fuel. They they have storage location for them, but um, but like. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know. They could be stored up in the highway department too. Um, that can be, uh, Seventy-five won't do much. No, no, no. But that so. But there are there are there is equipment that we'd like to get that we don't have. Yeah. So that was the whole point of that. 
Are you going to make a capital request? <laughs> Any other questions on the emergency management budget? No. no. Thank you. No. All right. Uh, next one is cemetery. And it is level funded. They just moved a little bit around mm -hmm. here. Um, lowered the mileage and up yep. the um, supplies. Okay. Oh. This is another one that is not, you know, we depend on convict labor. I don't know if you realize that. I mean, but we do. Like, it's, oh, it's right. huh? Yeah. We depend on the sheriff. During the, during mowing season, we depend on, oh, on oh. the sheriff, on the sheriff bringing the convicts from the county jail out to maintain our cemeteries. Mm -hmm. That is our, that is our budget plan. Um, and I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how much of a plan that is. Um, but it, it's nice for the sheriff to do that. Um, well, it's like a field trip. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess. And they do, they actually do good work. Yeah, but, um, but our cemeteries need maintenance. Yeah. They really do, they all do. Yeah, like, like, uh, definitely. Um, a, lot of, a lot of stones are... The, we're we're gonna, gonna have to make the, a special presentation. And, and they, all, they, they, they all have hundred and something year old trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, and yeah. when one of those goes down, that is a very expensive thing, and um, you know they've been able to make it without. But this is well, not this is not an adequate number. I will tell you, we're, there are s several, quite a few special revenue funds. I know there are that are yeah. so. Those are all small and uh, stressed. Though. All right. Those so are small. That's right. And John knows firsthand. He's been through every single one of them. So. Consolidating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a number for cemetery. Yeah. Maintenance and upkeep. Yeah. Any questions on cemetery? John, okay. No All right. Questions. Last one. All right is the Conway Currents newsletter. And guess what? No change there either. Level funded. <laughs> yeah, for a cut on here too. I'm sorry? Yeah, she right. said that it was deferring, oh, deferred sorry. to a later yeah. date. Yeah. They did just miss that. They, yeah. they did this. Yeah. So. They're doing a very good job, in my opinion. Um, I have no complaints with it. I, I, I speak for about everybody else in the committee, not me, because I put very little into it. But boy, I tell you, it's amazing the the newsletter, the yes. devotion of the folks who do it. Yeah, um, it wouldn't plus, happen without Louise. It would not happen without Louise. No, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. Um, Louise. Yeah, absolutely. We'll read and, every issue. And we also have a nice little revolving fund of the advertising money that's coming in as well. So, I mean, if we're lucky, maybe in future years this can come down. Unfortunately, the cost of toner keeps coming and right. postage, yeah. but right. you know. All right. So. All right. And don't tell Louise I said something nice about her. I'm going to have her watch. <laughs> I have no discussion. John, um, no, no questions. I have a question regarding FERCOG. Have they given any. Uh, Discussion, any, any release of what they're using as a cost of living adjustment? Last year they did 8%. I have mm -hmm. not heard. I was. Per, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know. If they told me it. Okay. But I don't think. I'm I'd sure it'll be in the recorder when it's done. No, actually, it doesn't get in the recorder. Really? That's part of the problem. That. Um, wow. And. The reason it, you all knew about it is because I, when I found out about it, I you shared it, squawked, um, and uh, we'll see, we'll see what it is. But generally, they, that that they're they they are operating under the system that their competition that they are not they are not they are not. Um, their relationship, pay raise wise, is not with the municipalities. For that their relationship and their competition is Boston and the counties surrounding Boston, and they have to keep their pay and raise their pay to be equivalent to that. And I think that that's a load of hooey. But um, yeah, because you know, 
the pro leagues, all the teams don't have the same payroll. No, and it, it's like that. And sometimes the the low end is the one who wins it. And they also don't. That eight percent was not applied evenly. There was some. Oh. To me, there it was, was like, an average. There, there was like fate. There were some, some departments got that. Some departments oh. got less. Some departments got more. Oh, wow. And I, I thought, in particular, the ones that. I thought did the most for us, got like the least yeah. amount it raises. Um, and the ones that we had a tangential relationship with at best, like really got raises. And I, had a good year. Yeah. Just a reminder, when we do go over the FERCOP budget, um, we're in the middle of negotiations with Mike right now. So that portion of it will be coming out. So it'll be a, a big change in that budget as well. Yeah. Oh, accountant, I could tell them that's Oh, okay. Yeah. We're doing something different? Yeah. 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 Well, same person, just different arrangements. Huh? Oh. Is that it? Yeah. I mean, that's do I make a, uh, a motion to uh, adjourn the Finance Committee? Second. Oh, second. All in favor? <laughs> yeah. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. All right. Roy, you haven't dessert yet? This is 7.3. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, everybody. Nice to see you, Tom. Thank you, Roy. I'm going to put that on there. <laughs> what, these chairs are we? No, no, no. no. What do you think of these new chairs? <laughs> What's the next one? It's free. That's a free good one. Night, everybody. What'd you steal? Right? Yeah. Bye. Thanks, guys. Great fun. Thank you. Thank you. do the last one on the new business? Yeah. Um, well, the discussion and possible vote on the accounts payable authority uh, authorization policy is uh, well. There's no vote um, for a couple of different reasons. There, there's aspects of it from a pre-approval standpoint. There are aspects of it that are somewhat questionable because, to certain extents, town meeting is already pre-approved. It, it, especially if it's a, a specific line item expenditure um, that was as part of the warrant in town meeting, then that's already been pre-approved. Mm -hmm. um, and after the bill has been generated, the service has already been provided, and to then, you know, so the, so the, the answer isn't really pre-approval or post-approval. The answer is just having the town administrator know what each of those state, uh, you know, and we've talked about this is, you know, it being aware of what each of those bills are and being able to represent what they are to the select board in public meeting, etc. And that, um, that that's sort of the answer to all this. Is that is that fair? Mm, except that, as I mentioned, if you want that to happen, we have to change the schedule because I received them about an hour before this meeting, just like you do. You know, you see them here. I don't. I don't have time to review them on the schedule that we have now. But, but so right now they are due at town hall Friday at noon. The previous town administrator would always spend Friday afternoons familiarizing himself with them, contacting everybody, calling everybody, um, and. I'm sorry, I spoke with him. He did not. He did. <laughs> okay. I don't know what he's done, but um, you know, he, he 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 would he would always be able to. I mean, so the the, the 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 problem right now is that we're getting bills submitted to the select board that um, we're not having adequate information about what those payments are, and we're the ones responsible for approving them and responsible for them being appropriate and wise and correct in all respects. So I have a question. When when we get the warrants to sign, I mean, we just sign, like, do we have a line item postponement? Kind of 
or when when we get the warrants to sign it's like we're going to pay all of these bills or is there a way for us to say we're going to pay this one but not that one because i feel like that's i mean like you said it's the select board's responsibility i feel like that is an incredibly huge burden for you to review every single bill and contact every single vendor that you might have a question about that you might that you can't anticipate what questions the select board might have about each individual bill i just feel like that's kind of like you said we'd have to change the schedule if that was going to be the, the procedure so is there a mechanism by which if the select board has an issue with the warrant and says this bill i have questions about and i don't feel comfortable paying this bill this week is that in, in so speaking we with town council it honestly it didn't sound like that was possible um we can have that discussion again but um and also speaking with the former town administrator his thoughts were more you know it comes down to a matter of trusting your department heads and not micromanaging them you, the town meeting has authorized this money for them to spend and they're spending it as i see fit so i'm more than happy to become more involved in reviewing them i'm not sure other than just flagging it and saying but you know i would i would then have to have enough time to contact the person on fridays i'm one of the only people in the office so how am i going to get a hold of somebody to question the bill if it's coming in from a committee you know you know what i'm saying so yeah. to me it's just it's not really workable as far as, as i can see all the vendor is going to be available yeah. on a friday afternoon too to but part of it though is that um when the uh, like i don't i don't know whether you're actually even looking at the do, do you read the bill the accounts payable Sure. The bills. As soon as as soon as it comes in, it gets put into um, a folder. And if I need to go through it again later, I will. But no, I don't. I don't really have the time ahead of time of a select board meeting to review them. So and that so that really is, we got to figure out a way that you could because part like you like you. I'd be happy to. So we could change the schedule because like one like you know one of the things that you like that you've often expressed a desire to, is to know what's going on more just with town committees and with town departments and a feeling sometimes that some things are happening that you don't know what's going on and that I remember expressing that but okay and but and that you know knowing how they're spending money um, is is part of that is a big part of that like we had a bill last week that was weird in some respects um and we have nothing could have happened with that one anyway though even if it had been questioned it's not something that anything could have been done so i guess the question is what would the board like to have be the outcome of reviewing the invoices that are going in for payment yeah yeah we're already beyond that point right so the, what I think the issue is, is what Phil's stating and what you're stating are the same things on different sides, is that Phil sees, I saw what he was talking about, weird purchases, right? But once that purchase is already done, you can't go back, right? So I, I, I guess, what are we asking for? Are we asking that they get approval prior to purchase? Well, <clears throat> You know, so so the, if town meeting is, it, it, you know, I, and I talked about this at length with with lawyer because my feeling is that too, you know, too many of our budget categories are too general and too all purpose and allow too much stuff to be stuffed in those categories, and that it's really in a, to, to say that those are pre-approved purchases, um, you know, that 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 we really need far more specificity in our budgeting um, and you know it maybe not even so much far more but just more um, and you know and there are specific departments in particular you know and um, you know the other one and you know we'll talk the, the our, our highway department you know in, in talking with the town council she she represents 13 towns um, 
the, the, the select boards have four positions in town, in each town, that are direct report. It's four employees that are direct report to the select board. The police chief, the fire chief, the town administrator, and the highway boss. And um, in her 13 towns, we are the only ones that do not have the highway boss come in. In most of those towns, they come into the select board every single week. The ones that don't come in every single week come in every other week. We're the only ones that don't have regular appearances by our town highway boss. All other towns have rolling actual performance evaluations of their highway boss. All other towns, all of the other towns that she represents have a requirement that the highway boss have a but come to the select board every week or every other week with a description of the work that they're going to be doing or have just done with a budget for each of that work and they're evaluated on a rolling performance evaluation based on their ability to keep to that budget. We do none of that and we need to do that. Well, I would say that if, if we're going to do that for, that we should do that for all of our department heads. That we should have, a, I mean, we shouldn't make it unique to the highway department. It should be all of, I mean, and have to do it monthly or do it, you know, stagger it. I mean, I think that would be a lot to have every highway or every department head come in every week. Those, but the, the other department heads do not report directly to us and we have no. So who are the department heads who report directly poli to us? Police, fire, fire, highway, and town administrator. Okay, so that's three. So. so they have, police and fire have a very modest budget. Highway has, um, you know, whatever, up, upwards of half of their non-school spending is, is highway. It's a significant budget and we saw you know, when, when you see Yeah, things. no, yeah, I, I agree. I just, I mean, I I don't want to get, I've said this before, like, I don't, I don't know anything about the highway department. I don't want to get in a position of micromanaging the highway department, the police department, the fire department, every single decision that they make about what they're doing on a, you know, weekly or monthly basis. I do, I do agree that it would be good to have more, like, a more regular check-in. Um, but I think that if we're going to do that for, we have to, I mean, regardless of the budget, we should do that equally. It shouldn't be based upon, you know, like you have a bigger budget than this person, so we want to see you more than we want to see the other person. Why, why shouldn't that be the, that's, that's the only criteria that makes sense. I'd have to agree only because I've been in situations like a highway boss is where if you have an emergency and it needs to be handled, it can cost triple, quadrupled amount if it's not handled immediately. So if there is a situation where they need approval from the select board prior to doing something operational, whether that's an emergency situation or a repair, um, it could cost significantly more down the road um, to go through those approvals. So I would want to understand, I, I agree like more communication of course, but I'd want to understand where the rules are. Like, are we talking operation expenses or discretionary? Because of course, discretionary expenses should definitely go through us first. Operating expenses, it's a very broad term with many things that can encompass that. So I would just want to make sure that we're not um, being a crutch in the system. And uh, you know, I, I, I don't, being asked to come up with a budget for the work that you're doing and being evaluated based on your ability to keep to that budget, that is that is part of the job that we have never been managing him on. And now in particular, this year in particular, we need to, be, we need to manage this department. Um, and that is, you know, one of the things that is going on that I don't know to what extent either one of you are aware of is the amount of town anger of people in the town that are just really upset with the hybrid. That um, when people see the dually pickup truck driving around, that they voted down and they see it driving around. And, um, it, you know, I, I don't know to what extent people have voiced that disapproval. I, I know I can't leave my house without people screaming about that and there's no doubt in my mind that 
you know, as long as his operating budget is part of the town's operating budget in Article 2 at the town meeting, then all of our operating budgets are in jeopardy. There's no doubt in my mind that his capital requests this year are in grave jeopardy. And the only way that we can get out in front of that is to manage that department and profusely apologize at town meeting for um, you know, all of us um, for um, doing an end around. You know, the town meeting said no to a dually. Leasing a dually is uh, a circumvention of town meeting, and it is. Uh, they, I don't know whether you've spoken, whatever. We're, we're, we're going to deal with this later in a different format. But like, we're in a bad spot with this department, and it's well, we're 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 we're, cl we're, clo we're close to being in a bad spot with all departments to the extent that this department is lumped in with the budget in whole as a whole. Um, uh, but yeah, I just I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable with you making these statements about the highway department without the super superintendent of the highway department being here to actually respond to the statements that you've made. Um, yeah, you go ahead. That's, that was the first thing I wanted to say. Well, I think we could come up with, as a select board, a plan to have a regular meeting whether I, I think bi-weekly is enough to go over not just the budget but what's been spent what's projected and what lay it lies outside of um, what was expected um, I think the dually is another subject that we should talk about later and how we can direct the highway boss to um, not I wouldn't say circumvent but um, if an uh, item doesn't get approved, is it our direction to that highway boss to say, this item wasn't approved, so any work that would be related to this item can't be done either? So if there's work related to this item, don't do it. <laughs> and then we can relay on the next meeting when there's a vote. All this work that could have been done that you're begging for couldn't be done because that that uh, equipment wasn't um, voted on. So here's your chance, right? So we should be the ones directing the highway boss on how to do that. I don't think he's gotten direction yet, and that's on us. Right. I, I also, yeah. with, the, with what's being said in town, I only know what I've known since living here. I have heard things, it's a small town. I know the highway department is a, one portion of the War of the Roses of Conway. And I think it's been, um, uh, from what I've heard, it's been uh, contentious with that department um, from even before the current boss took over. And the reason I think that is because it is a huge line item in our budget. And the school is a larger line item, but viewed as the jewel of Conway for good reason. But um, the next highest budget line is the highway department and people are saying why well there's good reason why because people aren't educated on it <laughs> but I, I, I can totally see why people have issue take issue with their taxes a large very large portion of it going to the highway department because they don't understand how it works and that's also on us to kind of educate um, but I agree that we could have I, I think bi-weekly meetings would be enough absolutely um, I, I mean, I think more transparency would be better for everyone, really. I mean, I don't, like, there's no reason to not, like, make all of this, like, exactly what we're spending the money on, and exactly why we're spending the money on that, and what the consequences are of not spending that money. You know, the consequences of not buying a truck. What work doesn't get done if you can't rent the proper equipment, if you don't have the proper equipment to begin with that, that we haven't purchased. Um, so... I also think one problem that we're having with not just that department, but other departments is uh, we're volunteers. <laughs> so we're not 24-7, we're not giving direction enough. So if, if we have certain ways we want things to go as a department, we need to offer that direction. And I, I think that can start, like you said, Phil, with these meetings. And it starts with transparency, but we also need to take the lead and saying, here's how we want you to do it. 
um, does this make sense? Let's talk about it. Let's develop a plan to move forward. That's the way I see it. All right, so we'll make a motion to have the select the town highway director come to the select board every other week from now on. Can I modify that motion that we just basically established this? Like, because I don't, I don't want to single. I mean, obviously, this is like the big ticket item we're talking about now, but I don't want to single out any department head. I think if we're going to have department heads report to us on a regular basis, then we need to also, and it might not have to be the same schedule, but I think that we should, you know, to set a precedent, it shouldn't just be the one department, it should be all the departments. I, I just wanted to point out that as a vote isn't anywhere on the agenda, so I didn't know if you wanted to, at least I don't see the item, action item on there. So you could hold. No, discussion on possible vote on accounts payable? That's payable though. <laughs> Is that well, it's kind of, topic? it's not really. It's okay, all right, so. <laughs> Let me know it's coming next week. So yeah, so you could put it on for next week and then maybe in the meantime think about, you know, the wording if you want it to be all however you, and then let me know. Maybe it should be based on budget because I don't want to single out a department either, but there is a major difference between well, the Well, right, schedule. yeah, so, but just like have a regular, get like a schedule, I mean, yeah. so that, and maybe the highway has to come in more often than police and fire, but. You know. Yeah, if, they, if they're not spending anything, they don't have to come in, right? So most of the time, the police department would never have to come in and say, right? Uh, yeah, um, and I'm happy if you throw the transfer station in there, because that's just another very right. high budget. Yeah. And another thing we should talk about more. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, so I, I'd say yeah, the transfer station would be one. There's a lot of repairs and issues there still. At least people aren't as angry about it. Jan, Jan predicted after four months people would be less angry about it. That prediction is, is coming true. I don't know. I know some people are angry. Plenty <laughs> <laughs> of people angry. Well, golf oh. doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. you know, in, as far as us giving out the stickers and we gave out the majority of the stickers and decals. People are angry about the People were fine. Really? Oh, well just, I mean. Especially people that are newer to town. Yeah. Right, exactly. And had to pay for yeah. this. Thing. I mean, they thought it was a steal. They thought we were nuts that it yeah. was only mm -hmm. 20 bucks for, you know. I got more of those, are you serious? This is all it is? <laughs> yeah. Than Hardcore complaining. Um, items not anticipated. Forty-eight hours. Anybody? Um, do we have any mail? Um, there was a letter that just came in today. Registered mail. No return address, no signature. <laughs> we'll make okay. copies for you, but it was about trees on Waitley Road, but the person didn't put their name, didn't put their address, and didn't sign anything but concerned residents. So I have no idea where, you know, so that's, that's all I have. <laughs> um, next meeting is February 12th. Uh, Week. I got a meeting every week. Um, every 12th, 6 p.m. here. Motion to adjourn. Second. I guess not. Oh, oh what? <laughs> updates? Oh, well, we got the IT one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was there anything more that you want to do with your update? I'm sorry. Um, the it's only good. thing it was in color. <laughs> that, that was Janine's color. I, um, did, I did cover that. I did say that how it's good that that's like people are getting used to it. And, I didn't really cover it. The, well, the only thing I actually really wanted to, um, I assume it's okay with you all that sustainability is going to come in on the 20th to give you updates mm -hmm. on streetlights and everything. So, um, but I, and you see the transfer station, it's down by 20%, which is great, our, our trash. How did we have negative tonnage in November? Because that was an question. increase instead of a decrease. Yeah, it was an increase. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, was it, it went up. Yeah. Um, but I did want to mention our first meeting today of the climate Community Climate Advisory Committee because it's a really interesting opportunity, I think, um, for us to be, it's a completely new way that the state is doing things. They're very interested in getting feedback 
from all the people who were on this advisory committee and I'm trying to remember the exact words that Oleander used, but it was about like accountable feedback or something like that, where instead of just giving feedback and it just kind of goes and nobody does anything about it, they're actually gonna be coming back to us and saying, well, okay, we heard you about this. We can incorporate this part, but not that part. But maybe if you tweak it this way, then we can incorporate that. And it just seemed like a really interesting way for us to have more conversations. There seem to be quite a few departments that are really interested in speaking with this new council to talk about new programs and it's all over, it's energy, it's really everything to do with climate change. So I'm really excited about it because I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for me to learn more, for me to be in the middle of it, to give feedback and to keep Conway like right at the forefront of this. So I'm very excited. <laughs> I want to say because you know I hold this whole thing of the transfer station so dear. Yeah. I think my PowerPoint proves that. <laughs> it, yeah, actually, yeah. I know in but, color. In color here too. <laughs> but uh, you know, we're on track to possibly save up to twenty thousand this year when you include the sticker increase and the tonnage reduction cost. When you're in a town that has no growth and we can't rely on growth we need to find ways to cut in certain areas this was the easiest solution yeah, this was this the most huge. obvious one to me so I know people are some people are up in arms about this but this could potentially help your um, real estate taxes yeah. not going up no and, and at, you know the, the 20,000 is the magic number because this yeah. that is what Janamine promised at, at public meetings yeah. which are <laughs> still available on you know on demand on YouTube right so, like, we're, when we're I saw la when I saw last month that the math didn't look like it was going to add up I was really starting to get there so the numbers have like picked up so this but, doesn't um, have bulky waste right it does, we haven't even touched bulky okay, waste all right, yet, which yeah, is the next right. tier yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Right. that that is a hornet's but, nest. But, right. but even this this is huge even the bulky waste i don't think well it, it's going to be a difficult one i know but i mean in terms of setting the prices i think that'll honestly be easy but one of the things i wanted to mention about the numbers that the other thing jan is we keep trying to tweak and this should be a discussion at some point is now that we're reducing the tonnage of trash, which is amazing, how do we reduce the number of hauls? And it's really difficult because going, as you know, if you, you could do a Wednesday and a weekend and then the next Wednesday, but do you go over the tonnage if you do, yeah. you know? And how do you, how do you parse them out to be able to get the most bang for your buck in the haul? Mm -hmm. So that's another, you know. It's a really fun but the, math problem for the bulk, But the, the, bulky, student the bulky waste thing. AI robot. The bulky waste thing, though, from what I understand, what I'm told is that the problem isn't the occasional users, mm -hmm. you know, and that it may, I think it's legit to consider that that's like uh, unfair to, to charge just the occasional users rates. The problem is the heavy, the frequent flyers. Yeah. And, um, and I, I see them driving up there all the time. And, and, and the, just the way that like the sticker regimen, like, like allowed for the regular you know, for like only only really hits the costs, the increased costs only hits the heavy heavy users. Like that's the there's got that, that's what makes sense for the bulky waste too. Yeah. Like oh like, for sure. Like once like, a month or something. Yeah, like the people one that go month, once month. a year shouldn't be charged the same for their thing as the people that go every week. Right. Um, and if you take stuff out, you should get like a, a, a discount. <laughs> discount. <laughs> If you take That's when we find stuff in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. All right. All right. Next meeting, February twelfth. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.